Hello from beautiful Dubai, one of my favorite cities in the world. Today I'm going to be trying all of the best local food around this city. This might be my new favorite dessert. The food culture in this city is unique because Dubai really only started being truly developed about 40 years ago. So most of the food scene here is influenced by other countries in the surrounding area. That being said, Middle Eastern food, Arabic food, Persian food is my favorite food on the planet. I have just come to what is supposed to be the best falafel and hummus in all of Dubai. All right, the food has arrived and this looks amazing. I ordered a falafel plate with hummus. The falafel is made of chickpeas, coriander, onions, tons of different spices, fried to perfection. And then I have this beautiful bowl of creamy hummus served next to it. They also gave me some fresh vegetables on the side and some pita bread. I'm just gonna go right in with this falafel into the hummus. Oh man, I'm always nervous ordering falafel that it's gonna be dry. This is not dry at all. It is fried perfectly. The spices inside are so good. And then the creaminess of that hummus. I'm gonna make a little pita with all this inside. Put some fresh greens inside of there, cucumbers, and loads of hummus. This food is ridiculous, so delicious. This is just bringing back so many memories to Jordan, Israel, Palestine. So much hummus, so much falafel. I love every bite. This spot is also right next to the airport. So while I'm eating, I'm watching planes take off. Up next, I have come to the most popular Syrian restaurant in Dubai. It's called Arus Damascus Restaurant, and it is crowded with people. It's currently 3 p.m. and this whole outdoor seating area has people sitting here. This place has 13,000 reviews on Google. They have fresh spits with kebabs going. They have roasted chickens on the fire. And there's even a section where you can choose your own fish and have them cook it up however you want. I couldn't resist just getting the traditional chicken kebab sandwich. It's got a full chicken kebab in there, some french fries, a pickle, and some mayonnaise. They were cooking the chicken kebabs fresh and it just sounded amazing. This was less than $3, so I'm excited to try it. There is so much seasoning in that chicken and you can actually taste that fire grilled taste to it. And french fries just make every sandwich better. They also served a plate of vegetables with this as well. Pickles, olives, and some pickled cabbage. Syrian food is the best. Oh, thank you so much. The restaurant manager just brought me a cup of tea for free. That's Syrian culture and hospitality at its finest. Oh man, I forgot how sweet they make their tea. So much sugar, but it is so good. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, it is time for something sweet. I have come to Mr. Kunafa, and they have all of the Arabic sweets you could possibly imagine. They all look so good. So they just gave me a little piece of baklava to try. Wow, that is so good. Crispy, crunchy, flaky. There's pistachios in the middle. Amazing. Thank you so much. Well, I was just gonna have some small light desserts here, but the owner of the restaurant saw me filming and he's like, you need everything. So the first thing he brought me is a huge piece of kanafa. This is what I was most excited to try. The name of this restaurant is Mr. Kunafa. Traditionally, this dessert has a layer of cheese at the bottom, and then there's a fried layer of vermicelli noodles, and then it's covered with a sweet syrup sauce and topped with pistachios. Oh, no way. 
That is absolutely delicious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Thank you. This is amazing. Thank you. So delicious. This might be my new favorite dessert. The sweet and salty just goes so well together. You have the soft cheese on the bottom and then the crispy noodles on top with the sweetness. And they served me a Turkish tea as well. So the baklava is a layer of pastry and then a huge serving of pistachios. This one has a cheese on it as well, but it's not a soft, salty cheese like the kanafa. It's a sweet, colder cheese. And then another layer of pastry is added on top with tons more pistachios. Mm, my God. The baklava is served cold and is a little bit sweeter. The kanafa is served hot. I've died and gone to Turkish dessert heaven, literally licking my plate over here. Man, people here are way too nice. He wouldn't let me pay for any of that. I tried and tried, and he's like, this one's on me. I seriously love the culture here so much. People are so friendly and they just treat you like family right off the bat, even if you've never met them before. Love you, Iraq. Well, this was supposed to be my next stop. Apparently the fresh juice here is out of this world, but they don't open till five. So someone else come here and tell me how it is. Hello, how are you? Salam Aleikum. Water in the back of this Uber. We have about a 30 minute drive to our next destination. This is a place in Dubai I have been hearing all about and haven't had a chance to visit yet. This is the global village where the entire world is represented in food, cultural dancing, etc. Each country has their own village where their culture is represented. I've heard amazing things about this place. I can't wait to see it. Dubai is such a melting pot and people from all over the world move here and I just love that every culture, every country is represented. There's an Iraqi bazaar behind me. Look at this mosque right here. And this place is huge. I was not expecting it to be this massive. All right, stepping into Turkey here. I was hoping they'd have one of these. I haven't had Turkish ice cream since Istanbul. This is bringing back so many memories. Oh, well, this guy's happy. Robotic ice cream. I love it. Looks like we got a little Chinese dancing over here. From Turkey, we have now stepped into Spain. Let's see what we got in here. And Belgium, too. We got some Belgian fries, some Asian bao buns. Ooh, paella. Literally anything you can think of, they have here. So the Global Village is only open from October to April every year. And not only is it a street food paradise, there's also an amusement park here with rides, there's entertainment, different shows, and even a bunch of stores for shopping. The only problem I'm facing is that there is too much food. I can't decide what I want to eat. Everything looks so good. Here's Africa over here in the Americas. That is so funny. They had these sausages on every corner in Bosnia. I guess every country really is represented here. Oh, there's Japan. All right, I'm gonna head over to Japan and see what we can find there. My favorite part of this place is that there are these porters 
that will follow families around with a shopping cart. And when you buy stuff, you just throw it in and they'll follow you around all night. I came into Thailand's village and there were fresh fruits everywhere. And these mangoes just looked so good, so fresh. Mm. I actually thought these came with sticky rice too, but they don't, it's just a mango. I'm gonna be really honest here. I had every intention of coming in here and trying street food from pretty much every single country, but I got food poisoning two or three days ago and it's gotten the best of me today. Nothing sounds good, my stomach doesn't feel good. So I might have to call it a night here soon, even though everything looks so amazing here.